Hey everyone, my name is Jack Williams well, with S and Casa. And welcome to a special episode of Seminal Script, yes. whatever we want to call this. We are post game after Miami, final score uh, 27 20. Wow, what Florida a game. State over Miami, another classic here at Doak Campbell Stadium. I'm S and I'm, what are you thinking after the game? I mean, when it comes to the rivalry game, it's a cliche, but you throw out the um, records, you throw out everything because you play, it's a, a lot more emotional game, and we saw that, you know, Miami played arguably maybe its best season game of the season, you know, or at least in a while, they'd be texting them earlier this year, but they played inspired football behind a freshman quarterback, they were able to run the ball well in the first half, in the second half, the offense slowed down, they were not get, able to generate much at that 185 degree touchdown, that kind of got it back in the game, but that defense, had to put some pressure on Jordan Travis, was, um, you know, Keon Coleman was, had four catches for 24 yards and a touchdown, so they shut him down, they took him away, you know, Johnny wasn't a like, strong game, but there's stretches of the game, he was quiet, Bell had a good start to the game and kind of taken away. So Miami's defense played really well throughout. They played a hell of a game, and you know uh, they made this an interesting one for sure. Absolutely, and you got to talk about the offensive effort too from Florida State as well, specifically Trey Benson, who continues to you know just rip off these really long runs. I don't know if he was doing this as much this season where we were seeing 40, 60 yard ones, but we've been seeing so many of these long runs from the season. He had two touchdowns tonight, which he was really just the impact player of the game tonight. And then we saw Keon Coleman really start getting involved. <laughs> Well, he was, a, he was an impact player on the Impact night. player of the year. We'll get to him in a second, but I'll um, continue. <laughs> well, you know, Keon Coleman, you know, we started to see him find his game a little bit more towards the end of the game, got into the end zone as well. Um, really saw the offense really start clicking as the game went on. As you mentioned, the pressure that got onto Jordan Travis that Miami put on him was very impressive as well. But Florida State, you know, did did what they needed to do to get the win. You know, we talked about, too, in the press conference after that, they were kind of just one big play away from this being a completely different game at the end of the game. You know, Miami was in that situation as well. You know, their usual starter came back in um, after Williams went down. And, um, you know, one long play and the game could have completely changed. Definitely. There have been a lot of heartbreakers for Florida State in this rivalry as well. So it's like you said, it's a rivalry. It's not out of the window for something like that to happen. <laughs> but, you know, Florida State was able to get it done. You know, just in another exciting game here. Um, you know, Exxon wanted to correct me here. Impact player, team MVP. Alex Mastromano, the punter. Absolutely. You know, um, I put in the grades. Special teams is up. I mean, you can check out our grades. They're up now. Um, special teams, the only A I gave out. Alex Mastromano punted seven times, tied a season high. He punted seven times against Pittsburgh last week. He averaged 49 yards a punt. 49 yards. Four of them went over 50 yards. He had that one that booted the, uh, the guy. He got, you know, um, kept it inside the two yard line. They hit another one that got inside the five yard line. So the man was on the clinic today, punting the ball. Um, it was a great job. But, you know, the biggest punt may have come on, you know, when they were um, pinned all the way back to the one-yard line after that question about, um, you know, should Jordan Travis have been a safety, you know, who knows. Right. Um, they said no, but I don't know. I was watching a replay many times, but whatever, you know. Yeah. Uh, but uh, just uh, going back to, you know, the punt, punt the, that one went 46 yards. He kicked it out of his own end zone. He had no breathing. Me and Jack were talking about that, you know. He had no breathing room, got a boot off at 46 yards. Yes, it was returned, you know, for a few yards, but that's less on him, more on, like, you know, the coverage didn't get downfield quick enough because, once again, they didn't have a lot of room, so he didn't have enough, the, the time to get a one with more hang time on it, but, you know, Mastermano had a great game, Fitzgerald, you know, two field goals again today, still only missed one on the still year, still only missed one on the year, it was nothing long, 33 and 22 yards, but, Gotta make him, you know, he, has, he missed one from 29 yards against the Wake Forest, I believe it was. Yes. So, you know, you still gotta make him, and he did, he did his job. So, overall, I think I gave the team an A minus. It was a good performance, strong overall performance. Um, I know people are getting on coaching a little bit, but I think we could talk a little bit about the um, decision on side kicking. I liked it. I mean, liked it. I mean, I was cool with it too. Listen, you were in a situation where, you know, the kid. The game was kind of not really flowing into your direction going into halftime as well. I, but did Miami have the lead at the time? Was it? Tied? It was 10 10 coming out of halftime. Oh. Miami took the lead on the field goal. They got one 20 yard run, and then uh, the defense shut them down. They had to kick a 51 yard field goal. So the defense did its job, just one big play. It was just, you know, the momentum drive, really. The momentum, as you can feel, it didn't really feel like it was 100% in Florida State's uh, favor. So, you know, they come out in the second half, and you know, they attempt something like that. They almost got it, too. It was very close. It was a really good, you know, onside, uh, you know, 
uh, kick attempt, you know, just, it was just inches really, you know, hops and stuff like that, you know, came down just, you know, the details of it. I like the decision as well. Like you said, some people are kind of harping on top of that right now. I thought it was a smart decision. We know that Mike Norvell has been a kind of riskier coach when it comes to stuff like that, whether it be onside kicks going for that fourth down, you know, we hadn't seen too much of that, you know, like recently, but you know, I liked the decision. And so did you. Yeah, no, the, and he didn't go for it on fourth down, by the way, today. He did not tonight, did not, no. But, um, he's a, he takes chances and he's an aggressive coach and the players love him for that. So I don't think he should ever change his DNA because, you know, you want to be play, you know, a coach that players want to play for, have enjoyed playing for. So I, I like the decision. Didn't pan out. You know, and, you know, I think we get too involved in falling in love with, with the outcome rather than the process, which is something, you know, Atkins and uh, Alex Atkins, offensive coordinator, and Mike Norvell have talked about. The process is as important as the results because at the end of the day, if you have a great sound process, the results will go your way. I think it was a good decision. You know, I looked up, uh, I'm down, and it looked like they were going to, um, Akeem Dent, you know, he called a money play. It looked like he had the beat on that and took a bad bounce, and so it goes sometimes. It happens. It's football, you know, and everything might not go your way. Most of the times it doesn't go your way, but, you know, you know Florida State comes out here with a very, you know, important rivalry win as well, you know. Undefeated in ACC play, yeah, that was so a big point. Yeah, no ACC record, you yeah. know. First time since 2014, I believe, when they made the first college football playoff. So it's a big deal. Nine years, they did a great job. They finished off the season the way they needed to. Get North Alabama next week, get Florida the following week. They are in position. Washington, you know, won today. So number five, one behind them. I think number two, Michigan beat number 10, Penn State. I haven't seen Ohio State, State score. And um, Georgia was up 28-14. It was like, well, this one I saw. So okay. Florida State needs to win to keep pace and stay in the playoff race. So this is a huge win. Um, obviously, I think Florida State, we talked a little bit about it, but I think Florida State needs to win out to have a chance in the college football playoff. Absolutely. So two games to, um, left, two, need two more wins. Yeah, and, you know, talking about a little bit of who could be their potential opponent in the ACC championship game as well. Right now, Louisville is looking at this position as well. That was a team that kind of had to pull away late against Virginia earlier this week. I um, mean, you know, in a little bit of a comeback position as well. Um, you know, a team that is also, you know, having to win in kind of a similar position too, where they have to win, maybe not for the same circumstances, but, you know, having to win to get to that championship game as well and clinch that bid. But like you said too, you know, Florida State's in a really good position right now. They're getting all that full health back. Um, we saw Keon Coleman and Johnny Wilson return. Um, you know, I think there was more guys just down the list as well too that are, you know, kind of back to 100%. I mean, um, one of the players, Jarian Jones, Norval told us at the beginning of the week, he would be back this week. He made the game-winning interception on the Tyler Van Dyke rollout, which he caught the ball and ended the game. That was a big play, you know. There's a couple, we can talk about the, you know, there's a few shortcomings. I mean, you know, Kevin Noel struggled a couple of uh, missed tackles. Ventral Cypress, a lot of both touchdowns. But overall, you allowed 20 points. Got to be happy with the, with the defensive performance, 27 points. That's two straight games after a string of 14 straight games where they scored 30-plus points, where they've been scored 30 points. Right. So it's kind of interesting to see all of that. But once again, rivalry game, you throw out the records, you throw out everything. You just got to scratch out a win for a second straight time at Doe Campbell. Florida State is escaping with a seven-point victory against the rival. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I guess any final thoughts on the win? It's a great win. They're undefeated in the ACC, 10-0. You know, 26th 10-win season in um, program history. Last year was 25, so great work for the, um, you know, a great win. I think you mentioned the added the, the um mood in the press conference was kind of silly kind of, kind of they're having fun they're enjoying it and that's the point of college football right enjoy it there's a general enjoyment just of by everyone to be here right now i mean i mean keon I, it was kind of funny because keon coleman jordan travis um kaylin deloach all rolled in like right at the end of akeem dent's press conference and um akeem was still asking questions and keon's like can i ask a question and he's like yeah and keon goes how's it feel to be miami three straight years and you know akeem had some fun with it as well and um, you can just tell everybody is, like you said, everyone's really happy right here right now. I'm guessing they're even happier. That's just a win over Miami. But like you said, they got to win out to get that final prize. But I believe Miami's 35 and 33 all time now, if that's correct. That sounds right. They're creeping up on or 34. Either way, my Florida State's too back now. Either way, Florida State is creeping up on that all-time rival rivalry, you know, making that 500 and stuff like that. But um, SM, where can everyone find all of our content? Yeah, it means um, Tallahassee.com, um, Nolsports.com. We have... Um, Jack has a great game recap. You can catch up on all the action in today's game, all the scoring. Uh, I have a um, grades up. Jack will have a uh, 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 do the deck. Well, I'll have like a post games. tomorrow, <laughs> and then we'll have another trending story about you know Jordan Travis talking about what this rapper means. And appreciate you guys wa watching and. Um, Jack, yeah, absolutely. So all of our socials are no sports. Um, on just about everything's up Instagram. That's T L H no sports. Mine on X is J 
Jack G. Williams. You can find Essen at Essen underscore Kassam. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Yeah, final score for I will add, you know, final score is 27 20, but um, if you want to see some great photos, I think of Alicia Devine. Our, Alicia uh, Devine, photo, fantastic our photographer. Um, her got some great photos today, and um, I think you guys will enjoy it. Just forget the action, that was great, but the celebration shots of the players going to the stands, I think you guys will enjoy that. She is, uh, she is a very she's very talented photographer. You guys will enjoy this as well. But yeah, we will see you, I guess. Yeah, we'll see you sometime next week. <laughs>